my name is Yolanda, and this is Eatin' and Sippin' Locally. This show is podcast in Austin, Texas. Hi, we're in Philly. We're in Philadelphia, and you are listening to Eatin' and Sippin' Locally. My name is Leah Turner, and I am the producer of Hot House Podcast. Looking forward to hearing your show. Hello, everyone. That was my friend Leah, and she has a show called Hot House, and she's based right here in Austin, Texas. And we recorded that little piece in Philly at the podcast movement. Now, she has a really great show, so you definitely need to check her out, and I'll place her in the show notes. But today, I am so excited to be back on the air sharing stories with you. And I am so excited to say you are listening to episode four. And on this episode, I will be chatting about the trip I took to Philly, my favorite app of the month, the changes I plan to do with the show, and at the end, I'm going to tell you what's going to be happening next month. But for now, let's get this show started, shall we? It is hard to believe that the podcast movement was in July. That's about three months ago. And on my last episode, episode four, I talked about three things I really wanted to do when I got to Philly. One was I wanted to meet Terry Gross. And then I also wanted to interview some Instagram foodie people that I connected with on Instagram before I got there. And also, I wanted to try and eat as many Philly steak sandwiches as I possibly could. And I want to know what the locals thought about their Philly steak sandwich. So uh, I did all three. (laughs) I did. I did all three. So let's talk about Terry Gross. On the last day of the convention, Terry Gross was the keynote speaker. If you don't know who she is, look her up. You can find her show on NPR, and it's called Fresh Air. And it's produced in Philly. Terry has a way of interviewing her guests that makes them feel comfortable to the point that they kind of like surrender or volunteer information that they didn't want to volunteer. And I like that. That's a good skill. I really think, though, I think it's her voice. Because if you listen to her voice, which makes her, it puts you at ease. And that's the reason why I love her show. And I wanted to learn as much as I could about inheriting, inheriting, (laughs) <laughs> these skills within the one and a half hours I think she was on stage so as she walked on the stage she got a stand in ovation everybody was so happy to see her it was just so cool to see her in person as she started to talk she mentioned that most of her interviews were done over the phone so I thought wow maybe that's how she's able to get these really good um interviews because who wouldn't want to do an interview over the phone you know you can stay in your pajamas if you wanted to you don't have to comb your hair you can drink whatever you want to drink and you're just kind of talking to somebody over the phone and so with her voice too it makes it very easy to be uh, very comfortable with her so I can see how she can get great information from people but she's not staring at them directly in the eye she also gave a corner about knowing when to draw the line when you start crossing the line, she said. And I think that's a really good point because when you start talking about people and you start digging into their um, personal life and you get really get to see how people change their body language or even over the phone, you get to hear them go <clears throat> or kind of you hear them moving stuff around a little bit. So, you know, they're uncomfortable. So she was just saying that, you know, to be mindful for that, or to be mindful of that. <laughs> How many times do I need to say that? To be mindful of that and um, to stop. To say, hey, you know, I know this is making you feel uncomfortable. And let's just move to a different topic. And she said, but, you know, when you do that, people are people put a little bit more trust in you. And before you know it, they probably even tell you what you asked them in the beginning. But, um, but this time it's on their terms. So that was a really good point. So as she kind of wrapped up her speech. She ended up doing a little Q&A at the end. And uh, there's a lot of people asking her great questions. And then there was one lady who just really so excited 
to actually be in the same room with her that she couldn't even get her answer out or her question out rather. So Terry told her to calm down a little bit and she did and she asked her a question. But um, as this was going on, I started moving closer to the stage because I knew I really wanted to meet her and I had already kind of rehearsed what I wanted to say to her because if I... If I meet somebody that I really like and I go up and start talking to them, if I don't rehearse a little bit, I'll just go up and go, hi, my name is Yolanda and I'll say, and thank you so much for taking the time with me. <laughs> I swear, you, my tongue will get so twisted or I have another problem where I talk so fast that I don't even pause or, you know, I just run right over the periods and then I go, okay, and thanks for talking to me. You know, and then I run off and go, oh my God, what just happened? You know, so I wanted to be really calm. I knew I didn't have to tell her how much I liked her show because, hey, I was already there. She knew I liked her show. But I wanted her to just say two things for me. And the first one I wanted her to say, hi, this is Terry Gross, and you're listening to Eating and Sipping Locally. You know, so I had my mic in my hand and I'm ready. And the other thing that I wanted to say, to, wanted her to say was, um, I live in Philly or I work in Philly and my local place to go to in Philly is, and that was it. Just two things I wanted her to say. And I knew if I would be the first one in line, she would probably do that for me and stuff. So I was ready. But then as she um, kind of wrapped up the um, the convention and uh, she thanked everybody and um, then she'd start walking off the stage. And as she was walking off the stage, I'm walking closer to the stage because I'm like, oh, where are you going? Are you going down on the side or do we need to meet you around the other side of the stage or what's going on? She literally left the stage and did not even come down and greet and meet anybody that gave her this great standing ovation coming in and leaving. I was so disappointed. I looked at my friend Leah and I just started to cry like a baby. I brushed it off and I talked to some other speakers like uh, Shannon Carson. Um, he's a pretty cool guy. He's got a podcast. Uh, it's called Homemade Stories. And he's also from my hometown, Detroit. So that was pretty cool to take a few pictures with him. I also met John Lee Dumas. His show is called Entrepreneur is on Fire, and I really love his podcast because he starts off with, are you ready to ignite? <laughs> and you just get really excited about listening to his show, and you get really excited about being an entrepreneur. And so he has some very good uh, speakers, and he, he's a really good interviewer, too. So I'm going to highly recommend those two podcast shows to listen to. Um, and also check out my IG page. I have a few pictures of me with uh, Shannon and with John, and I also have a couple other pictures about uh, what was happening at the podcast movement. So definitely go back and look that th look through my Instagram, and uh, you'll see it. And you can also find it on Facebook uh, at Eat Missive and Locally as well. So let's talk about the Instagram food bloggers. If you listen to episode four, I talked about connecting with a few foodie bloggers and three were interested in meeting up and doing a little interview and talk about Philly's foodie scene. So that was right after Terry's Gross event. And since I didn't get to meet Terry Gross, I was ahead of schedule so I went up to my hotel room, packed my microphone, made sure everything was charged because I got this new mic and I wanted to make sure that it played right and I would have no problems. And then I put on something cute to wear. And by now I'm feeling a lot better. You know, I'm, I'm over the Terry Gross thing. I'm ready to dive into this whole new thing of going out to interview these people I've never met. So um, after I got dressed, I headed down to the lobby and I waited for a lift to pick me up. I was to meet these people around 7 o'clock at an Asian restaurant, which was 25 minutes away from the hotel that I was staying at. 
and it was about 6.15 at the time. So I'm thinking, this is great. I can get there early. I can take a look around. I can set up my mic. I can kind of shake my nerves off, you know, and, um, and be ready to interview these foodie people. So as I was waiting for the lift at the hotel, I thought, you know, maybe I should text the contact person and let him know that I was on my way. Well, that's when I got the runaround. I text the contact person and I said, hey, um, I'm going to be a little early and just want to let you know I'm on my way. And then he texted me back and said, uh, you know, we're eating right now. Why don't you come around seven o'clock? And I thought, and so I text him back <laughs> and I said, you're eating? Well, I want to eat too. I mean, that's kind of what this whole interview is going to be about is the Philly food scene. So I said, so um, I'm waiting for a left to pick me up and I'm on my way, you know? And um, then he kind of, kind of paused. There was like no tax. So uh, I text back and go, um, my lift is almost here because I'm looking at the map. It's telling me that it's coming towards the hotel. And I'm like, uh, is everything okay? And then he just texts me back and says, uh, well, they just left. And I'm like, who left? And he goes, uh, the other foodie people. He goes, and I don't know where they went. I'm like, um, wait a minute. How can I just leave like that. Didn't you just tell me you guys were eating? You know, so I'm thinking, okay. I'm like, do I need to stop the lift? And he goes, because it was getting closer to the hotel. And he goes, well, you know, I don't really know where they're at. They're probably going to be back about seven o'clock, you know. So um, as I start to, you know, there's so much going through my head. You know, I'm already been disappointed earlier. And so I'm thinking, okay. So I immediately just stop the cancel the lift to pick me up and just thought, I'm going to talk to him a little bit more and kind of get a feel of where things are at. So um, I said, so I text him back and go, so what's going on? You know, he goes, well, I think they took off. And I said, well, okay, well, Okay, that's fine. I said, why don't we just interview with each other? Do you want to meet me downtown here? And I'll be happy to, you know, buy a couple of drinks or or do you want to meet where you're at? You know, and then he texts me back and he goes, um, I just realized I have to go back to work. I'm going, what? <laughs> what do you mean you just have to go back to work? He goes, you know, you know, and he just kind of kind of played it off in his text like, Darn it, I am so upset that I can't hang out with you today, but I've got to get back to work because I need to make money. And I thought, you know, that's fucked up. <laughs> that was all I could think about. That's really fucked up. So, okay. So I said, okay. I, um, you know, kind of shook it off a little bit and said, okay, well, I didn't want to be mean or anything because I am starting out. And um, and that's the thing about sometimes you get disappointed at the very last moment. So I decided to just take a deep breath and I text him back and went, wow, okay, well, you know, I am so glad that I text ahead of time and um I do thank you anyway for trying to set this up and maybe one day our path will cross again. And uh, sorry, you have to go back to work. And I left it as that. And um, I just thought, well, you know, I'm going to probably see if I can hang out with some people because everybody was uh, getting ready to leave. There were some people that were leaving that same day because that was the end of the convention. And... Um, Mark and him, who I met up with, were hanging out someplace else. So long story short, I ended up going out and having a good dinner with my friend, Eric, who had just moved to Philly a week ago. So it turned out to be really good because I was able to take some great pictures and I was able to catch up with him. But I don't really understand why they canceled. But then 
the more I thought about it later, um, I remember before I left, I made a big deal about the foodie people in Philly because I had met a guy here a while back at Franklin's who was from Philadelphia, and he had told me that Philly people did not eat Philly cheesesteak sandwiches. And I was made a big thing about it before I left on the show and also on my Instagram saying, I can't believe that uh, Philly people don't eat cheesesteak sandwiches. That's just like Texas saying that we don't eat barbecue. So I made a big thing about it. So I'm not sure if they canceled because they thought maybe I was going to uh, think I was going to try and embarrass them and say, what's up with this? You guys don't eat Philly steak sandwiches because Really, they didn't take me to a Philly steak place. They wanted me to meet them at an Asian restaurant. And um, and I I don't know. I don't know. I'm just thinking that might have been it. But if I have a chance to do it again, which I probably will, I think I will not have one person as being the contact person. I will probably, or the smart way to do it is to talk to all three or all the people that I'm going to be inter interviewing with and then get their email address and send them maybe a list of questions that I were going to be asking them because really the other foodie people didn't know anything about me and I don't even think they even listened to the show and I don't know maybe they did maybe that's the reason why they canceled but they really didn't they only had one person that was kind of the liaison between us. So they had no idea what kind of questions I was going to ask them, um, who I was or anything. They only heard from the person who was telling them. So I'm, I, I, I would definitely do it differently. I'd be a little bit more professional and not just direct message people and think because you're a foodie person and I'm a foodie person that we just all want to get together and be buddy buddies. It doesn't work like that sometimes. So I, I learned a valuable lesson there. But overall, I had a really good time uh, hanging out with my friend Eric. And um, I met Eric at a place called Dim Sum Garden. This place is located in Chinatown. It is family owned and it's also BYOB. But they do sell wine and beer there. They prepare their noodles and dumplings fresh every day. Oh. My God, it was so good. If you want to see what we ate and who my friend Eric is, just check out my IG page and scroll down and you will see a few pics of us chowing down on some homemade noodles. God, my mouth is watering just thinking about it right now. I also added a few facts about Din Sum Garden and exactly where it's located in Chinatown. So when you do go to Philly, this is one local place you need to definitely add to your foodie list. And FYI, a lot of places that I went to to eat accept cash only. And this is very important tip because uh, in Texas, we all use credit cards. We never use cash here anymore. So to um, to know that when you go to Philly and draw out some money so that way you don't have to have these crazy little uh, added fees to all the ATM machines that you're going to have to stop at just to get some cash. So um, definitely, definitely make sure you have plenty of cash because there are no credit cards accepted at majority of the restaurants that I went to. And if you're listening to this and you're from Philly and you have an IG page, you need to tag me if you've been to Dim Sum Garden because I want to know what you ate and uh, how much you like the place as well. So now let's talk about the best places to get a Philly cheese steak sandwich. But first, I want to introduce you to a Philly person who told me about her favorite place and some tips on how to order like a local. Hi there, my name is Andressa. I am from the Real Estate Invest Her Show podcast. And I am from Philadelphia and my favorite cheesesteak place is Gino's. You might heard of them. They're right in front of Pets. 
so you can go on both and compare. But here's why I like Gino's. First of all, before you order it, a tip for you guys, before you order it, make sure you know already if you want with or without cheese and with or without onion. So they have a little template outside so you can look at it and you're not gonna waste anybody's time. So it's very quick how you order it. And if you're confused, they might be asking you to go to the back of the line because it's 24 hours. So they're very, very quick. But the favorite thing is the cheese whiz, which is like a melted cheese. You can imagine then that being like put it on top of your fries. So that, I can't even think of it that I can start like desiring it right now so that's why that's my favorite place you can find me on uh, my website the real estate investor show or on instagram the real estate investor thank you so much hey thank you for that tip so i'm off to pats and Gino's. they both are on a corner but they're like kitty corner from each other and they both have outdoor seating and I am so surprised by this because it's cold there in the winter time. So I'm pretty sure they have a lot of outdoor heating lamps um, in the winter. But that day it was sunny and warm and it was busy. I went to Gino's first and I ordered exactly like a local because when someone gives me a tip, I use it. I got me a cheesesteak sandwich. I got my french fries and had them covered with cheese with, and I got a big old sweet tea. So now I'm just walking around the building trying to find an empty bench or a table to share with someone. And as I'm walking, I saw this woman standing by herself at a table. She had a warm smile and she looked pretty inviting, so I asked her if I could sit with her. She told me that she was with her husband and he went up to order food and she was waiting for him to come back. And yes, I could join them. So we started the chat. I told her that this was my first trip to Philadelphia and I did a podcast show. So she immediately handed me over her phone and asked me if I could download for her. So I did. So I downloaded all four of my episodes. And I thought, man, that's pretty cool. She really wanted to know who I was. I told her, too, that I was on the hunt for the best Philly cheesesteak sandwich. And she told me she had a favorite. So I asked her if she could uh, tell me and would she be interested in doing a little interview about it. And she said yes. So you know me, when opportunity knocks, man, I am answering that door. I quickly stopped eating, I got my mic out, and I turned it on. Okay, I'm out here at Gino Steaks, and I ran into a wonderful woman. And your name is? Gina Sears. Oh, and you're going to tell me a great story because I was just about to sit down and eat, and she's sharing her table with me. So I am going to let her tell you how she feels about Philly steak sandwiches, and do you think Gino's is the best? It's probably a three-way tie between Gino's, Pat's, and Tony Luke's. It's Tony funny Luke. that she would no, mention Tony one. Luke's because <laughs> earlier that day, really? the valet guy told me that that was his favorite place as well. But when I got ready to go and I got in the cab, the driver told me if I wanted to have an experience, then I needed to check out Pat's and Gino's. And he was right. I definitely got an experience that day. Okay, well, here's my little story. I was born and raised in Georgia in a county of 3,000 people. Moved to Jacksonville, Florida, the biggest city uh, close to me. Lived there for many years. Came to know Jesus in 1989. And my ex-husband and I came to Philadelphia. Hand over your mic to the interviewee. To because you just might get a surprise. At that moment, I knew I had lost total control over my mic, and this gave Gina the opportunity to share her personal journey, her love for God, and the mission that she and her husband was on. But that was not my show, and I knew I had to find a polite way to get my mic back and ask her the question. Hi, how are you? Hey, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing a podcast. Yeah. So, do you want drink some fries? Huh? Some fries? Fries? Yeah. Yeah. And of course, we have to have a cheesesteak, and we just picked Geno's. I said they're all good, but let's come here. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. We're going to sit here and enjoy our 
because this is my first time too. Okay, yummy. So we're going to enjoy this together. I okay. really awesome. had a good time with Gina and her husband. That was the first time that I ever put myself out there as a podcaster and asked people if I could interview them. I was very nervous, but I know people, and I know people love to talk about their favorite foods, and they are really eager to share many of their other stories if you hand over the mic. (laughs) I'm still laughing about Gina's story. Now, Gina, I know you are listening. No harm was done. I love hearing your stories, and I thank you for sharing your table with me. Good luck to you and your husband, and maybe our paths will cross again someday. (laughs) Really good people. Now it's time for me to head over to Pat's. I still got a little room in my stomach, so as I crossed the street, I noticed the vibe at Pat's was different. At Gino's, most of the tables were filled with groups of friends and couples, but at Pat's, the table was filled with families and kids. So I got to the counter, ordered like a local, but this time I skipped the cheese whiz on my fries, but asked for a little extra whiz on my Philly cheese. Now, I don't know if you remember, but I remember this really well. Remember the cheese whiz in the can? (laughs) Oh my God. You look on the back and look at that ingredients and there was nothing real (laughs) inside that can. But it's something about Hot, gooey cheese whiz. Oh my God, I'm thinking about it. I can barely talk now because I'm thinking about the sandwich. How it melts and gets in between the steak. It is so good. It is really, really tasty. I can see why people go for the Philly cheese steak sandwich. But um, I found myself a seat. And at this time, I shared a table with some Chicago folks. And I asked them if they thought Pat's was the best place for a Philly cheese sandwich. And um, they thought, they said, yeah. So I asked them if they wanted to share that with me and you. And they said, of course. So you know what I did, right? I put down my sandwich and I turned back on my mic. Hi, I'm at Pat's King of Steaks is what I've heard. And I was looking around to see if I can find some people that actually lived in Philly because I wanted to know why... Uh, Pat's one of the best Philly steak places. But I ended up running into some people that's from Chicago, which is really cool because I'm from Chicago as well via Detroit. And um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find out how they got to know about Philly steak place and um, why they come here. Hello. So being from Chicago, major foodie. We have good food. We have sloppy food. We have all kinds of food. Philly, I feel, has the same kind of vibe. And we're like, let's check out what Philly has to offer. Everyone knows Philly cheesesteak. You've tried it in different cities, but you have to try it in the city it was created. And I wasn't sure what I wanted to eat, so I asked the guy at the front, and I said, okay, this is my first time in Philly, my first time here, what am I doing? He said, the cheese whiz, cheesesteak. I agree. I just had the cheese whiz, and it is very good. And I have another person next to me here that's also from Chicago, and I'm going to find out what she was eating today. Okay, so I got the provolone cheesesteak. Only because I'm not a fan of the cheese whiz, and I got some onions on mine because I love onions. And um, usually when we travel around to different states and cities, we try to do something that's part of that city. Um, But we wanted to do something that's local, something that's traditional, and so we ended up coming to this place. So there you have it. Two votes for Geno's and two votes for Pat's. So what did I think about both of them? Well... I took some really cool pictures at Gino's, but the best between the two, my vote went to Pat's. It was tastier to me. But my favorite was this place called Max Cheese Steak. It's located on the north side of the city. This place has no indoor or outdoor seating. You order your food and you can take it to go, or you can walk through Max into a bar called Eagle. It's a tiny place. It has booths along the wall to your left, and a long bar on the right side where you can eat your sandwich and have a drink. Now, how did I find out about this place? Well, the first day I arrived in Philly, I met two guys. They told me that the best place to eat a Philly cheesesteak sandwich was in the hood. (laughs) They called the north side of Philly the hood. So I called my friend Eric, and we took a 30-minute train ride to the north side. Now, in 2015, Max Cheese Steak Stand 
was in a movie called Creed with Sylvester Stallone. There was a dining scene film there. Sorry, I can't tell you more about that because I have not been curious enough to look it up on YouTube. But I do know the cook that was in the movie, he was still there cooking because he told us about the movie and that he was famous. And he added some extra peppers on our sandwiches. So that was pretty awesome. So Eric and I got our wrapped sandwiches and we headed into the bar and to grab a beer. Not much of a selection on beers. They had Coke 45, uh, O English 800, and um, I think they had some other beers, but I don't remember. But you can get it in a 16 ounce or you can get it in a 40. Now what's a 40? Well, it's a glass bottle filled with 40 ounces of malt liquor. Malt liquor contains more alcohol than a regular beer. It's a fat bottle too. The bottle of the beer is so fat that you can barely put one hand around it. Up north, in my old neighborhood in Detroit, when we were broke, we always shared a 40. It's cheap and you both got a really nice buzz from it. I should have gotten the 40. It would have made a great pick on my IG feed, but I end up getting the 16 ounce of Old English 800 and it came with a straw. Now I've never had a beer that had a straw inside of it, but hey, I'm in Philly and I'm hanging out with the locals. Let's talk about the app of the month. Besides me being an Instagram junkie, I am also an app junkie. So each month on the show, I'll be sharing an app that I like to use and maybe you might want to check it out too. Now this app is not out yet, but it's called WF Chef. The app was created by my good friend James. Hi James. WF Chef is an on-demand home culinary app and it connects clients with chefs. This app can search for a chef that will come out to your home and prepare a meal that you envision. Now let me give you an example of that. Say for instance, I had a party of eight of my closest friends and I want to make maybe like a salmon dish with a few good side dishes to go with it. But some of my friends are gluten-free and some of my friends are not, but I really want everybody to enjoy it together. What I can do is I can go on WF Chef, search by the chef's name or by the food type. And then what will come up will be um, a couple of chefs that I can choose from. I can read their bio and then pick one, send an email to that chef. And then what happens is that chef will contact me. We will talk and I can tell them about my gluten-free friends. I can tell them my... Um, my guest count, and information, and any other information that I might have. So from there, he will set up a menu and a price, and then that chef will go grocery shopping. I really love this idea. And then he comes to your house and prepare the meal for you and your friends. Now, if you don't have all the proper utensils, no worry. The chef can bring his own. And I think that's even cooler. <laughs> this is going to be a really great app, um, so you definitely keep an eye out for this one. Contract a chef to come out and do a week of organic baby food for your kids. It's endless what you can do when you have a chef that can come to your house. This app, like I said before, is not out yet, but what James is doing right now is he's building the heart of the app. He is looking for chef entrepreneurs who want to work for themselves, pick their own hours, and create a strong base for themselves within WF Chef. This is a great opportunity for people who love to cook for others but want to work for themselves. And based on your skills, you can set up the cost you want to charge the client. Now, you can find more information about the app and James on his website. And I will also have that in my show notes for you so you can um, just cut and paste and maybe share it with a friend if you can. I am so looking forward to having James on the show to talk more about this app, the WF Chef app. And I'm pretty sure we're going to be hearing a lot more about this wonderful app. 
But in the meantime, if you have any apps that you would like for me to try, or if you want to come on and talk about them, because I can do a, a show on apps. There is so many great apps out. But if you want to talk about it, or if you just want me to try it out, send me an email. And you can also find my address in the show notes as well. And hey, who knows? I might have you on the show. My name is Naomi, and I run the travel blog Roaming the Americas, where I write about sustainable travel in the U.S., Canada, and Latin America. I'm from the Philly area and originally from Maine, and I am listening to Eating and Sipping Locally. And where can we find you? You can find me at roamingtheamericas.com. Thanks, Naomi. I met Naomi in Philly. If you love to travel like I do and want to have a positive impact but don't quite know where to start, then you need to check out and follow Roaming the Americas on Instagram. Naomi has some great tips about being a responsible traveler, and I am so happy I met her. Naomi, when you come to Austin, look me up, girl, because I love to show you what we locals do right here in Texas. (laughs) I love seeing Texas. Well, we are coming close to the end of my show, and I just wanted to let you know I plan to do a few changes on my show. When I first started out, I thought I would do every other week, but I have decided to just do a show once a month. I think quality over quantity is better for me. I am still getting the hang of this podcast thing, and I'm really trying to manage my time so I can get this done and also continue to live my real life. (laughs) Man, I'm finding my passion is turning into hard work. But you know what? I'm loving it, and it's just going to take me some time. So please subscribe to the show, so that way you can get my episode each month and find out what I'm doing locally right here with Eating and Sipping. So let's see. Next month, I have an interview with one of Austin Food Bloggers. I also want to share my favorite farmer's market tips and my app of the month. And let me tell you, lately I have discovered some really good local podcast shows right here in Austin that I want to introduce you to. They have inspired me to continue to move forward on my show. So I definitely want to share their show on mine because I strongly believe that when we share, we grow stronger together. So on that note, I just want to thank you so much for spending your time with me. And I'll be chatting with you in December. Connect with me through Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter at Eden and Sippin' Locally. Love to see what you're posting and who you're following. And if you'd like to come on the show, check out my webpage at Eaton and Sipping, that's E-A-T-I-N, and Sipping, S-I-P-P-I-N, locally.com. Subscribe to the show on Apple iTunes, Stitcher, and Spotify or wherever you download your podcast show at. And if you do download me, please rate the show and leave me a comment because I like to know what you're thinking. Well, until we meet again, keep it local. Local.